Next part of the examination, we're going to cover active, passive, and resistive range of motion. For the ankle, it's really quite straightforward. There's two primary axes. The first one covers both dorsiflexion, which is bringing the toes towards the nose, and plantar flexion, which is a pushing down motion. The other axis is inversion and eversion, so inversion was more of an adduction to the foot, eversion is an abduction. And you can test those as we've discussed previously with active and passive motions. So actively, you can have the patient pull back on the foot. And if you want to check passive, you can apply an overpressure in the same direction. That can be repeated for the other motions that we looked at, the eversion and the inversion, as well as plantar flexion. When you test for strength, you're going to have the patient go all the way into the position, so hold dorsiflexion, resist a downward force, checking on the strength of the anterior compartments of the leg. You can again repeat this for both inversion as well as eversion, um, but when it comes to plantar flexion, if you push down, it's easy for the athlete to overcome the strength of my biceps with the strength of their calf. So typically people will look for other ways to meet that strength demand, and we'll do stuff like toe raises, um, either supported or single leg, um, to get a better gauge on the, on the strength of the calf. When you're evaluating a patient's strength, occasionally what we'll do is we'll get creative in evaluating that plantar flexion. Some patients are going to be so strong in their gastrocnemius muscles that they're going to be able to overcome any sort of force that you can generate during the examination from a seated position. So occasionally we'll get our patients up and have them perform body weight heel raises to evaluate for the strength and integrity of the plantar flexion and the muscles that allow you to do that.